I mean, the microphone's on, and I just asked you a question. Uh, uh, he Usually, talking, the way was... that radio. Just go sit outside. Oh, just wow. Go sit outside. Oh, he was talking. Just go oh, sit wow. outside. Wow. See you later. I mean, yeah. Dan was trying to set something up. He asked you a question. Who are you, man? <laughs> You're going to tell me that's my fault as you stare around at all the lights with your <laughs> mouth open? Theater of the mind, Dan. He's, he's becoming worse than Cody, Mike. <laughs> what? Like, he's beco- it's hard to believe, but he doesn't seem no. to know when to talk. <laughs> he doesn't. He, this is the it's thing. A delay in Thank you, Amin. Look, I believe oh, that Amin okay. Hassan is rivaling Greg Cody. Greg Cody is somebody who historically... Doesn't speak when you need him to, and then speaks when you don't. What are you need talking him about? To. Like he interrupts people. He, I asked him to look around the room. He has he has stepped on five jokes today because he's not <laughs> looking anywhere. He will talk when you don't want him to. It's crazy. It's it really been a is. Good day. <laughs> and today's been a good day. Live from ESPN Studios in South Beach. Part show with the Stugats. Miles Garrett, Mason Rudolph, take you've never heard is coming up uh, later in the show. Oh, yeah. Tim Kirkshin going to join us at 11 a.m. I in Loopy O Oil. His first tweet of the new decade was him just farting on his phone, evidently, and a bunch of numbers. We've all been there, right? Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitard Show. Have you accidentally tweeted something like, I in loopy o oil. The only <laughs> goal today is to go viral for something very serious. We are hoping that something serious today presents itself so that uh, so that we can have some fun. Hopefully, it'll happen with Lane Kiffin at noon Eastern because I am uh, dressed like uh, and made up like Darth Maul as part of an unending. A river of punishments. I, I have like 50 left because of whatever happened while I was away. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Right. I, you went I, away. That's what happened. Yeah, well, and Stugatz evidently yeah. just cre- just kept picking awful things for me that ended up losing in, at the grid of punishment. I didn't ask for any of this. I mean, I, listen, you know, the bucket came my way. You weren't here. Someone had to pick for you. That someone was me. I did the best I could for you, man. Mike, what were you laughing about? How often he says, listen? I was laughing at the grid of punishment. I guess we now live in a PC world. <laughs> uh, Stugatz promised you. Bucket yet. of death. Stugatz. Bucket of punishment. <laughs> and what happened to your voice there? Nothing. It sounds fine. I'm telling you, my voice. Yesterday, everyone told me, Dan is wrong. Your voice has never sounded better. That's what they said to me yesterday. I'm telling you. Why are you lying about that? That's what a few people said to me. I mean,. Everyone. It's gone from everyone to a few people, and well, by the time it, we're it, done, he'll just admit he's lying. In my world, okay, Mike Ryan is everyone, and he said my voice sounded fantastic yesterday. And that's not what I said. Oh. I sound. It, I, I said it didn't sound like extra bad. Oh. I don't know what Dan's talking about. It sounding extra bad. It just sounds like the normal bad. And then Dan Stanzik, my other producer, this is my world, okay, because they're the two people that care about my voice the most. He said it sounded perfect uh yesterday we were talking about the houston astros because it is funny to see carlos correa out here now a little defiant hey if you don't know the facts shut the bleep up (laughs) he's saying that flatly which is not exactly the contrition you want from your cheaters Uh, we've talked before about the idea when someone gets caught doing something wrong you want to see them humble not them lecture you about the facts you don't have or you need to shut the bleep up Uh, but lebron james has uh, wandered into the fray here stugatz he has decided to tweet about this in a way that's super patronizing, condescending, and not terribly self-aware, given that the chance he had to stand up for something. (laughs) When it came to China and his sneaker dollars, he went into hiding, (laughs) and furthermore, before going into hiding, 
came out against free speech. Like, in a way that was deeply offensive. But he's in sports. And so now he's out here tweeting about how baseball has to get its house in order because of how mad he would be if someone cheated him. And I assure you, LeBron, that however mad you would be if someone cheated you is not as mad as I was at you as the son of exile when you decided with all of the power in the world in sports to hide under a shrub to sell sneakers, (laughs) to continue protecting your money line. Like, honest to God, there's no self-awareness there. Like, zero. Zero self-awareness. Not exactly apples to apples, Dan. This is about a guy talking about being cheated in sports. Also, the Spurs cheated. They turned off the air. Like, that's actually, like, a better, like, comp than the China thing. I'm talking about being cheated at democracy. I'm talking about coming out. You're going to throw your back out for that reach. uh, You think it's a reach to wonder why it is that he's protecting ethnic cleansing? That's the reach. I think the, <laughs> tying it to the Astros is the reach. I don't it, like he just weighed in the same as anybody else. I don't know. I don't. What, th- what is happening? I know here? what's happening. This is the clip that he wants the Darth Maul costume on. Oh, yep. That's yes. exactly. yes. yes. a right. heady play by you, Dan. Oh, and you have to, to figure oh. this out. Right. And you on. have oh, to lay out and let out. him go. There are oh, plenty of things for him to opine oh, on today, like and this an is idiot. one of them. Yes. Oh, I see right through you. See right through you. Mike, go sit in the penalty box for two minutes. Get out of here. Rightfully so. Billy, what are your thoughts on the? Astros and hit yourself with a you don't get the show as you get out of here. Hit yourself with a also quite the rationalization. I don't think that's what hit your t- you get out of here. What? Get out of here for two minutes. Wow. You don't get the show. Wow. Just saying, you're sending him far too much credit. I was trying to. Billy thinks everyone should cheat. Oh my God. How great would that be though? Stugatz, can you go with me down this path? Sure. This is what I think should happen. The baseball thing, here's how you do the baseball thing. Not Again, not that I'm endorsing the baseball thing, throwing baseballs at people. But if you're going to do that, the easy way around that to avoid punishment for like your you know substantial significant players, you just call up someone from the minors and you say, you know what, our kangaroo court money, that's going to pay for whoever's fine it is that goes and he hits the Astros. And you'll get a 15-game suspension, whatever it is, right? And then we'll just send you back to the minors and you did a good job. Welcome to the show. You know what I mean? And then you don't have one of your aces having to pay millions of dollars in fines and missing like a lot of time, right? But if you don't want to do that and you don't want to stoop to the level of hitting people with baseballs, what you do is you get your entire team to cheat because we've already seen that if everybody does it, nobody gets punished. So you just have everybody on every team cheat, and then there's nothing that can be done. Problem solved. <laughs> That's what they were doing with steroids, right? Sugats is wondering what the baseball media is doing. I mean, the two biggest stories of their lifetime were right under their noses, and no one did anything about it. Seriously, think about that. The steroid scandal and this scandal. It wasn't exposed by the media. I wonder what they're doing, baseball media. Are they in the press boxes eating the free food? Because these two stories were right under their noses, literally in Mark McGuire's locker. Well, but that that was, I think, revealed by the media, well, ultimately, so that is, it was in his locker. This started because of an article by Ken Rosenthal. Well, it started because Mike Fires lent a voice to it, and he was on that team. I mean, Mike Fires exposed the entire thing. Joe Girardi just said he was the Yankee manager back in 2017. Did we know about the, Yan- uh, did we know about the Astros? Yeah, we knew we had to protect our sign. No one said anything. Like, no one said, not the media, not Joe Girardi, not any of the players, and Yankee players. By the way, do me a favor, enough, enough. You're going to line up behind Garrett Cole because he was on those teams. He knew exactly what was going on. It's okay as long as the cheaters are in your clubhouse. That's my favorite thing, I think, about this whole thing is that baseball is like such a fraternity that everybody's outraged and going after, like, the action. But not specific players because they're like, it's horrible what they did. They cheated. I have no respect for them. I'm like, oh, what do you think about Justin Verlander? Well, Justin Verlander is a really good guy, and I don't know what happened here. <laughs> and it's like they won't go after anyone in particular, just the team. And then General if you press stuff. them, they're like, how about Jose Altuve? Well, Jose Altuve, you know, what a great player, MVP caliber guy. What a good story. Harold Reynolds actually came out with something that sounded like what Stugatz was arguing yesterday and put it on the poll at Levitard show. Does Stugatz think that enough is too worried? Uh, Harold Reynolds uh, said that uh, just thinking like a baseball person, the way that he was pitched after Chapman had walked the previous guy and with a 190 hitter on deck, that that was not anything other than an obviously bad pitch after six fastballs had missed. 
an obviously bad pitch that most people would have hit out of the park. And he also pointed out that Altuve was indeed running all over the field afterward. He did not run into the clubhouse and hide and change shirts immediately. He was running out around <laughs> on the field, and it was lending credence to what Stu Gatz was saying, which is how frustrated are you today? If Carlos Correa is telling the truth on the facts and Altuve was not one of the guys <laughs> cheating and he's the one that we're all associating by name with the cheating. I want to ask you guys this, though, before I get to this statement from the, uh, uh, from the Major League Players Association. What do you think of the idea? I saw this floated yesterday by some people on Twitter. Pitching goon. If the commissioner is going to say, hey, there are going to be stiff punishments for hitting people, you just bring up a bunch of AAA guys and just start throwing baseballs all over the place. Billy just said that. You know who I'd bring back? I'd bring back the guy that's suing the Astros. I'd give him one more shot. <laughs> hey, you know what? They ended your career. Why don't you come pitch for the Blue Jays for a game? How can you do that with minor leaguers? How can you do it? Because there's a service time thing that prevents it. You can only have 25 people on a roster. It'd be easier to do when you have 40 people on the roster at the end of the season. I mean, you just bring someone up and right. then uh, you send them down. I don't know that it works like that. Or you just... The the thing that's beneficial, I would think, not again, not that we're endorsing that anyone does this because that would be very irresponsible. But if you do it with a minor leaguer and there's a fine and they lose out on money because of games that they're suspended without pay, like you get someone that's making the least amount of money because it will cost them the least in terms of lost wages. And then everybody else, you kind of have a pot around the team and you hand them some money back. Feels mean, though, doesn't it? No, we, we would never endorse or suggest that anybody <laughs> does this again. I just want to be very clear on that. From the standpoint of, hey, you're finally getting the call up to the show. We want you to bean someone, get fined, and we'll send you back down. I mean, he would build some rapport with his teammates. The thing that's frustrating about it's all of this— It's been done before. It has been done before. I think the frustrating part about all of this is obviously— you see the commissioner didn't punish anyone, and the reason that he didn't punish anyone is because he didn't go up against the players' union, right? So he knew, I'm probably going to lose this or whatever. So I don't know if it was to save face or what it was, but like, even if you're going to lose, at least make it look like you're trying to do something. Don't come out and say, hey— I didn't want this to be an issue where I set a new precedent because like this seems like when you would want to set a new precedent, when you have one of the biggest cheating scandals in your sports history, like if you're not going to set a precedent now, when do you set a precedent? You know what I mean? Like, you know, you're going to lose, but at least make it seem like you're putting up a fight and then you can put it on the union and say the union. Look, he's I toothless, man. He's toothless. He doesn't have the power that he thinks he has because the union won't allow him to have any teeth. But at least make an effort. Make it look like you're trying. Like He did. He thought this was going to work. The stiff punishments for management. It's blown up in his face. And now he's apologizing yesterday for calling the World Series trophy a hunk of metal. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Pick from a range of coverage options with the name your price tool. We'll find a price that works for you. Here's your Sports Center update. Ryan Newman is awake and talking with doctors file, uh, following his fiery crash at the finish line of the Daytona 500. Head coach John Beeline and the Cavaliers have mutually agreed to part ways. J.B. Bickerstaff has been promoted to full-time head coach. There's always a Bickerstaff waiting in the wings. Vivid Seats, the top ticket source for the live events you crave. Now is a loyalty program that allows fans to earn credit back. Go to the App Store or Google Play, download the Vivid Seats app, and enter promo code ESPN25 for 10% off your next order. Don't buy just any seat. Get a Vivid Seat. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. It is Dan and Stu from the Clevelander in South Beach on ESPN Radio. Download the Vivid Seats app and enter your promo code ESPN25 at checkout to get 10% off your next order. Don't buy just any seat. Get a Vivid Seat. The BlackTux.com is the easiest way to look fresh for your wedding or special event. To get 10% off your suit or tuxedo, visit TheBlackTux.com and enter code DAN. 
A tweeter writes in, so Dwayne Wade is just going to get a pass for bleeping over Gordon. They all agreed to make it a tie, and D. Wade goes rogue to help out his Miami guy. Ha, 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 so funny. Was Gordon laughing? Lebitard, your Miami hero, is a clown for this. Has he apologized yet? He's that guy. <laughs> I mean, Gordon got a Puma deal. He's laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> uh, I am going to go sit in the penalty box for two minutes because I was not listening to Billy. Derek Jones Jr. got the Puma deal. Oh, my bad. That's right. Is that a fine? Stugatz but- is going to go sit with me in the penalty box for I, two minutes. I will, but Gordon did get a shoe deal out of it. He did. He got a sneaker contract in China, I believe. All he right. Did. You guys figure out whether or not Stugatz is right on this so that we can figure this out. But I'm going to go sit in the penalty box for two minutes because in the first segment, I was not listening to Billy the way I should have been. Okay. So am I he joining you? A, he did get a shoe deal. You got a sneaker deal? Yeah, with a Chinese brand. Okay, so I got that right, but initially I got it wrong. Uh, you do got you the guys, company wrong. I did. Do you guys want me to join Dan in the penalty box? That could be fun and funny. Um, or do you want me to stay out nah, here? Because you can, you can stay. Do you want to know what I'm going to talk about before you, uh, you agree nah, to have me stay out here? Matter. It doesn't matter. Because I'm going to talk about soccer. Are you? <laughs> oh, really? Are you now? <laughs> yes. Then he stays. I yeah. mean, Mike Ryan has been raving about this soccer player, okay? Like the Wayne Gretzky of soccer. I don't know who he is, but he scores goals. A right? 19-year-old Norwegian player called Erling Haaland. And yesterday, Mike has never done this. Yesterday, Chris, he told me, hey, this kid, he's going to score a goal today. Minus 140. I said, how do you Which know? Which is it's- a lot. Which is a lot to lay in a soccer game for someone to score. I didn't feel good putting the bet in. Like, I'm laying odds on a guy scoring a goal in soccer. There are never any goals in soccer. It's why I continue to say soccer is dead. But this kid, apparently, this guy scores two to three goals a game, which is crazy. And so yesterday I laid 140 to win 100, and the kid didn't score one goal. He scored two. And my question is, who the hell is this kid? He just got transferred into this team, Borussia Dortmund. He was playing in Austria. He's a a 19-year-old Norwegian player. Everyone thought he was going to go to Manchester United, but he ends up going to this club in Germany, which is a famous club, but they're most known for transferring players that are developing into superstars to like the big time glamour clubs they've been accused of being like a feeder club to Bayern Munich um, they had Christian Pulisic before they transferred him over to Chelsea Jaden Sancho is an English player that plays for them that's a, a teenager that's going to be a big time transfer this guy is on an unbelievable scoring streak and just at every level that he's played he just dominates the game it's ridiculous he gets subbed into the game he scores within like the first three minutes he's on the pitch he's you, unbelievable you should get more money because you bet he was only going to score one, but he scored twice. Well, no. I mean, it was just just to score no, one goal, it. minus 40 to win 100. I understand what you're yeah. saying. If he scores twice, I like that little oh. wrinkle. A sportsbook <laughs> needs to get on that. Okay. If you bet a guy to score a goal in soccer and minus 140 and he scores a second goal, what you are suggesting, Chris, is that you should get additional money. Zagaki. <laughs> That's not how sportsbooks work. That's how they go into business. That's how my sports book would work, and I'd go out of business. Mike, is this kid going to change the landscape of soccer? I believe that he is. Because, <laughs> because listen, I have been bet. waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting for this kid my entire life. A kid who could score two to three goals a game. That's he's insane. Had, he's had three formal appearances in the German league, and he scored eight goals there. I mean, wow. it's it's unbelievable. He steps on the pitch, and he he can't soccer. stop scoring. Soccer is back. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't dance now. I make money moves. Damn, while you were gone, I taught Norwegian soccer. Two minutes. It was great. It was great. I won money yesterday. I mean, soccer is alive. You guys are scaring me with the things that you are putting money on. Facility managers can, uh, entertainment purposes only. Facility managers can breathe a sigh of relief because Granger is here for all their needs. Tell them, Stugat. Running your business is a 24-7, 365-day-a-year job. Every problem, every solution is up to you. When a problem arises and you need a solution, Granger's got your back. Whether you need critical items fast, something isn't working like it should, or you just can't find exactly what you're looking for, Granger's ready to help because you don't stop, neither do they. Granger has 24-7 customer support. Sourcing specialists and same-day pickup and delivery options. 
Don't forget about their on-demand products and technical expertise. Granger has everything you need. Whatever you need, whenever you need it, Granger's got your back. Call clickgranger.com. Stop by a branch. Granger for the ones who get it done. Dale, you are listening to the Dan Levatar show on ESPN Radio. Chris, can you put it on the poll, please? Is there always a Bickerstaff <laughs> waiting in the wings at Levitard Show on Twitter? ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Pennzoil synthetic motor oils are made from natural gas, so the next time you get an oil change, ask for Pennzoil. The proof is in the Pennzoil. Here's your Sports Center update. Brian Newman is awake and talking with doctors following his fiery crash. At the finish line of the Daytona 500, head coach John Beeline and the Cavaliers have mutually agreed to part ways. J.B. Bickerstaff has been promoted to full-time head coach. And finally, Burger King is testing a sandwich that consists of only French fries sandwiched between sesame seed buns and globs of ketchup and mayonnaise. Sounds delightful. The key word is globs. <laughs> I mean, it is globs. Oh, mayo and ketchup. Do we get those? I think it's where is it, Mike? That they're only doing that in? They're testing it in New Zealand right now, Chris. Put put it on the poll. Uh, a Burger King burger made of fries with globs of mayonnaise. Disgusting or delightful? Sports Center brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Think ahead, think advance. At any time, one in four batteries is about to fail. Get a free battery test and free installation with any automotive battery purchase only at Advance Auto Parts. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. You can also just go to Burger King and make one. <laughs> just take out the, the hamburger and put fries in instead. Nah, I'm sure they do it with love. <laughs> you think they do it better than you do it? Um, Good ingredient, love. <laughs> Billy, I'm wondering. Globs of love. Globs yes. of love, of yes. course, yes. Uh, Gloves. <laughs> Work that out, huh? <laughs> uh, Billy, did you guys end up seeing in the shipping container that Billy Corbin documentary, Screwball, that is uh, amazing and uh, just a bit flabbergasting? Because if you watch that at all, you are not surprised in any way that baseball doesn't know how to conduct an investigation <laughs> on cheating. Oh, I mean, no. Like, when you watch that, that documentary, you see that the people that were somehow ahead of baseball and their investigation were, like, with all due respect, clowns. Like, they somehow figured out a way to beat Major League Baseball, and they were, like, super sloppy and, like, out in the open, ahead of everything. Like, no secrets, but somehow still stayed ahead of the testing. Put it on the poll. Can you uh, call someone a clown with all due respect? <laughs> <laughs> you definitely can. Um, like Bozo would take that as a compliment. But the, yeah, a career of it. The the investigators <laughs> the the investigators were clowns. Uh, the baseball investigators. And when you see what's happening here, and I know <laughs> the baseball union isn't as strong as it used to be, and Dominique Foxworth would make very. Uh, factual arguments on behalf of how it is that the football union has gained strength to uh, be close to as strong as the baseball union. But here is the baseball union reacting to this. And I'm curious what you make of all of this, Dugas, because Manfred had to have thought this was going to go differently. He could not have expected when he hit with those punishments where you hit a general manager and a manager in a way that uh, is is a penalty that feels like it didn't have a precedent in the sport. He had to feel so strong, strong like bull, and he had to feel so good about what it is that right. he had just done to protect the interest of the game, and now he's apologizing, and now as everyone is mocking his leadership, and now his players are giving <laughs> voice to things you never hear baseball players 
give voice to. And here is the Major League Players Union uh, releasing a statement. The day after The Athletic published its November 12th article, Major League Baseball informed the Players Association it would be conducting an investigation and that it would want to interview players as part of that investigation. MLB said from the outset that it was not its intention to discipline players. This was not surprising because the applicable rules did not allow for player discipline because even if they did, players were never notified of the rules to begin with. And because in past cases involving electronic sign stealing, MLB has stated that club personnel were responsible for insurance, ensuring compliance within the rules. Against this backdrop, the association on November 13th sought and received confirmation from the league that the players interviewed and any other players would not be disciplined in connection with the allegations made in the article. We received that confirmation promptly on the evening of November 13th, and the player interviews began days later. Any suggestion that the association failed to cooperate with the commissioner's investigation, obstructed the investigation, or otherwise took positions which led to a stalemate in the investigation is completely untrue. We acted to protect the rights of our members, as is our obligation under the law. <laughs> I mean, it looks really weak, and I got to think that Manfred thought he was showing strength. Because he got the guys in charge is what you're saying. Is because it was a punishment that all made us all gasp. Right. Like they were talking about serious. Ended up in a place. <laughs> you didn't need to dump it. It was a I clear. I want to clarify. Was a he clear, had to dump it. It was a clear to dump it. Then I had to. You said it the second time. He had to dump it. Yes. Yeah. You went back. You corrected yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a harmless I mean, mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a that, you could have gotten away with it. <laughs> yeah. if you called attention to it. You're an honest person. I know that. But, yeah. Two more minutes? <laughs> I think the problem is, Dan, he went after A.J. Hinch and he went after Jeff Luno, and no one cares about those guys. It's the players who did the cheating. In football, you go after Belichick, you go after Kraft, and people care because they think the NFL coach is still very, very important. No one thinks the manager is important or has any sort of control. He went up. He went after the wrong people. I'm certain. Nobody can't is the point. I just I read to you why it's not. He did whatever he could in a toothless position, and now he's sitting here and he's apologizing because he's talking. Look, man, he gave on this show the single worst interview a commissioner has ever given in public. And now it is being revealed to people again and again as they see what's happening in baseball. Right. Oh, they don't know how to do any of this. They're bad at all of this. Yeah, uh, The Athletic actually had a really good article about this. And the reality is it's not just CBA, MLB, PA kind of stuff. It is labor law in this country. You can't uh, cancel somebody. You can't punish somebody for something that you never notified them was against the rules of their employment. And not only that, but before the 2019 season, the MLB had made it uh, explicit that the club management would be held accountable for any e-sign stealing. So he really had no recourse to, to punish the players. Beyond the, the obvious, hey, if I give them immunity, then they'll talk. There's also, he can't punish them anyway. And if he had tried to, they would have gone to arbitration and they would have lost. It's why he gave them the immunity. He gave them the immunity right. because he knew that he couldn't punishment punish them. And it looked good. It looked good to give them immunity to get honesty what, instead of saying just the truth flatly, which is, hey, I can't punish them because of labor law. When the punishment came Amino out. Amino Hassan, ladies and gentlemen, he's hey, always man. just <laughs> hiding under Billy Gill's desk. They get that athletic password, by the way. <laughs> when the punishment came out, though, it, I think people were taken back. They're like, wow, this is a lot. Like, they're getting rid of the manager. Right. They're getting rid of the president, GM, whatever, for a year. And they're fining the team $5 million. Like, it did seem like a big punishment. But then when things started playing out and you realize, well, wait a minute, none of the players were punished. People start getting angry. And then the players, like, left him out to dry by not really feeling sorry about what they did. And they came out. And then it made him look even weaker because – they had no remorse. They knew they got away with it, and then they were defiant and defensive about it. They should have. They should have told everybody just to shut up, just shut up, and and take the punishment. We'll all be fine. The problem was, as Billy said, everyone started talking. They did initially, though. They told players not. Uh, they, it was months before anybody said anything. But the other part of this is Carlos Beltran was a player who was involved, and now that he's a manager, he got hit with the firing. It's kind of funny that. 
being a player did not save him from punishment because he just happens they to test, not be a player. They anymore. Test stayed on as a player one more year. There you he'd go. Be fine. Attaboy. <laughs> they tested Ron Washington for cocaine. They can't test the players, or they couldn't test the players for that. They got a manager for cocaine, and I didn't even know they were drug testing <laughs> managers, but they can do that to managers. They can't do it to the players. But I think you, Dan Levitard, you are missing the real opportunity here because Rob Manfred is completely alone. Everyone is bashing him, and you have an opportunity here. Here to settle up with Manford and bring your relationship with him full circle. You do. You have a chance, Dan Levitard, to mend fences with the commissioner of Major League Baseball. You do. There's an opportunity here for you, Dan. Now I'm telling you. Quite the wide lane, and you're quite the wide person. And if you could do that today while your dress is Darth Maul, yes. it would be a chef's yeah. kiss. Do it, Dan. How do you, which do you think would look worse, honestly? Like knowing that you can't actually punish the players because of what's bargained in the CBA. But giving them like a bogus penalty anyways, and then having it, you know, play out in arbitration or whatever, and ultimately they don't serve that penalty, but you tried to do it, or you just say, you know what, I can't do it, so I'm not going to try. I honestly, and this is my honest opinion on this, I believe that Manfred walked in to a totally unwinnable position because he's handcuffed. There is no winning here. The reason he's getting ripped from every circle, every corner of the universe, the reason that that is happening is because the position is completely unwinnable. Mending fences. Pay that man his money. So proud of you. You have a wedding to attend. The only articles of clothing in your closet are jeans, T-shirts from 2004. He didn't actually take your advice, though. Hey, but he took a step towards it. I'm telling you, we're going to get the exclusive interview. I'm telling you, that's what I'm angling for. He needs, to stop, he needs to stop doing interviews. He doesn't do those well. No, he needs to do it with a friend. <laughs> no, he, need, he needs to stop doing them. Are you offering your show as a safe Yes, space? of course. This is a platform to talk about why you want to apologize for calling we're the World Series a trophy dialogue. a hunk of metal. An ally. I don't mean. embarrass yourself. Let the don't embarrass yourself like the commissioner of baseball. Let the black tux no, help no. you out. Damn, damn, damn. I mean, we take one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. I mean, come on. Why opposites attract? <laughs> I'll pay two dollars. The black tux believes every groom deserves a better experience when it comes to finding formal wear, a suit or tuxedo for their big day. Did you know that the black tux was actually started by two guys who had one of the worst tuxedo fittings you could imagine? It turns out they aren't alone in this frustration. Just listen to these one-star reviews from competitor tuck shops that shall not be named. Go elsewhere. The place is pretty terrible, unless you are dressing like your grandpa for Halloween. We felt weird buying a suit from somebody so unhappy. We were afraid of his bad vibes might follow us to our wedding day, so we left. Whether you're buying your outfit or looking to rent, you won't find formal wear or an experience with formal wear or designs like the ones you'll find at the Black Tux. We have all used them. We love them. We swear by them. If you want your wedding to be remembered for the right reasons, order your suit or tuxedo at theblacktux.com and enjoy 10% off with code Dan. That's code Dan for 10% off the Black Tux formal wear for the moment. You're listening to the sensational Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. Is there any particular reason that after all these years you still don't know how to talk into the microphone? Uh, Weird. It's sort of his deal now. That's my it, thing. It's his theater of the mind. A line. You're just sort of bored, indifferent. I thought your thing was talking trash about events that you were going to fail at. I thought that was your thing. I can have more than one thing, Dan. <laughs> well, can you give us 30 seconds on this thing? Trailing away from the mic is super in, dude. <laughs> If you missed any of our interviews, check them out on demand in the Dan Levitard podcast brought to you by the Capital One Venture Card. When you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, your next trip is closer than you think. What's in your wallet? All guests on the Dan Levitard show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. 
You should all be lucky enough to hear the hamster wheel churn in Stugatz's head when he starts to get an idea, <laughs> and it takes him a minute to get it off the ground. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell the people before we play this Rob Manfred sound back to back on what it is that you're trying to do because I don't understand it. You're starting with the slogan and then trying to figure out what the stand is as opposed to having the conviction of the stand and then coming up with the slogan. We'll figure out the stance after the fact. We have no idea what we're standing for, but we have decided this show, I was talking to the guys during the break, we want to align ourselves with Rob Manfred. And so every good stance, every good cause needs a slogan. And right now we have two. Danfred or Stanford. We don't know what we're standing for. We don't know what we're trying to achieve or accomplish, but we want to stand with Rob Manfred because he is very alone right now. Here is one of the reasons he's alone. Just play them back to back, the sounds of the commissioner of baseball, uh, your baseball leadership. The idea of, you know, an asterisk or asking for a piece of metal back um, seems, you know, sort of, a futile act. So he didn't realize the error of his ways, but he soon thereafter did. In an effort to make a rhetorical point, I referred to the World Series trophy in a disrespectful way. And I want to apologize for that. There's no excuse for it. Um, I made a mistake. I was trying to make a point, but I should have made it in a more effective way. And again, I want to apologize for it. I have a defense for this. Total misunderstanding. Total misunderstanding, yeah. Dan. Like, Bobby maybe put his foot in his mouth, but not a big deal. One, it is a piece of metal. Two, I mean, if you're playing for the big piece of metal at the end, that is a cool name for a trophy. <laughs> Imagine if that was the XFL trophy's name. Everyone would be in, like, oh, we're playing for the big piece of metal. They'd be like, yeah, we are. That's what I want, the big piece of metal. But because it's baseball, like, oh, no, it doesn't be the commissioner's trophy. No, he's ahead of the curve on this. Big piece of metal should be the name of the trophy. Have we heard from the trophy? Did the trophy accept this apology? <laughs> Gary Bettman would have been fired if he said that about the no, Stanley Cup. He would have been fired. Whoa, 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 Lord whoa, Stanley whoa. is more than a trophy. Right, exactly. A big I mean, cup. A big Lord cup. cup <laughs> a big ass cup. <laughs> whoa. Watch wow. the language. Jeez. A little respect. Oh, I mean, that's the name of the cup. It's the no, it's yeah. not. No, it's not. It's Lord Stanley. A big chunk of metal. Uh, Roy is still reeling because uh, he enjoyed talking about uh, movies that traumatized him as a child. This is something that was trending here on Twitter recently. What was the one that traumatized you? This is. I want to go around the room here on movies that traumatized you as as a child because mine was Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oof. Wow, that's mine, a long time ago. Yeah, mine was It. It. Yeah, the original It. But, uh, mine, Tim Curry. Mine actually starred Jay Billis. I come in peace. <laughs> wow, it was really? terrifying no, because they no, had that thing no. that went in your like uh, spine and it would just like suck out like the juice from your head, and it was just like terrifying. Jay Billis was an unbelievable actor in his wow. day. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, did Stugatz, Billy, or Chris have a movie that traumatized them as a child? Blue Chips. What? I had no idea any of that was going on, man. <laughs> I have Neon two. Bedro. I have two. Eyes wide shut. I mean, I have two. Eyes wide shut. I mean, <laughs> as a kid. Yeah. As a kid. When you, you stumble doing? across that movie on HBO, you're just like, what is this world oh, that these people man. are living in? Yeah. Yeah. That was one. Oh, and yeah. Nutty Professor. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. When yeah. Dave Chappelle's that. on stage yeah. and he starts that making fun sad. of the fat yeah, professor and he gets really fun. sad and the music yeah. zooms in on his face, I lost it. Lost it. I, uh, Connection point. It hit too close to home. <laughs> the golden child, when they went to go talk to the lady and she's behind the curtain and he pulls the curtain back. <laughs> Amino Hassan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than the Dan Levatar show on ESPN Radio. Song would we have to play at the reception to get you on the dance floor? Stugatz. Well, again, I'm the worst dancer ever. Any song would do when I got caught dancing that my son pirated the video, and it was that Uptown Funk You Up. Who, who is that again? <laughs> oh this is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Go.
We'll get to. If you want to talk to Tim Kirkshire, we've missed him. He is back, 786-456-4837. He returns with the baseball season. Uh, I didn't think, Tim, and thank you for being on with us again, I didn't think once this initial story broke that it could get any worse, and it seems like every day for baseball this gets worse, Tim. How does it keep getting worse? I did not see this coming, Dan. I did not see this player versus player conflict coming at all. I've covered for 40 years. I've never seen players go after each other, maybe not independent specifically, but after teams like I've seen here. And when Mike Trout, who is so measured in everything he does, best player in the game, face of the game, never says anything controversial, when he comes out, followed by Aaron Judge, who's equally – uh, measured with things, and then Nick Markakis, who's a great guy and a great teammate, who never says anything to anybody. When he comes out, it's just another reminder just how revealing this is and how angry players are at the guys on the Astros. What's the closest you've seen? Because baseball players, as you said, don't do this. They don't put their names on criticism of other teams like this. The closest you can remember to that, where guys were totally okay, because I don't even remember during steroids it being like this. No, I look, I've covered every strike since 1981, starting in 81. I covered Pete Rose. I covered the entire steroid era. And, and I don't remember the steroid era, you know, people pointing fingers like this nearly, nearly as often or as angrily as is happening now. And I repeat, I did not see this coming. I knew after that initial press conference, which went so poorly, that more trouble was ahead. But I didn't expect so star players to come out and speak like this. And, Dan, as you know, we're not done. We haven't really heard from Carlos Beltran yet. Alex Cora at some point is going to have to speak. And we haven't even heard from the Red Sox punishment. So this story, sadly, is a long, long way from being over. What uh, would you look at and say these are the most interesting items about what it is that I'm witnessing? Uh, well, again, it's, it's the brutal honesty of the players. And because, again, I've seen some of these other things. I've seen commissioners bashed before. I've seen the union taken on and owners taken on, but I've never seen players go after players like this. And it's 
it's really discouraging in a way for the game, but maybe this is a good thing. Maybe it's about time players started to speak up about this. Maybe this is going to galvanize the players eventually, but right now it certainly isn't doing that. And at some point, I have to think the commissioner, who has been pounded the last few days, is going to get in front of some individual players, meet with them and say, all right, what should we do now? Because what's happened to this point simply hasn't worked very well. Tim, it seems like the sign stealing is not the issue. It seems like every team has tried to done it and will continue to try and do it. It seems like the issue is the use of electronics, the elaborate plan, the cameras. That seems to be the issue here, Tim. Tried to have done it. Tried to have done it. I'm sorry about that. Right. Super Bowl I've written the sign stealing story 20 times. It's one of my favorite things I've ever written because it's so interesting how, using your eyes and ears, you can detect something that's going on on the other side. To me, that is great gamesmanship, and it is a part, a integral part of the game. But when you start using technology the way that the app did, that crosses the line clearly. And in this case, I was told right from the start, a bunch of teams do kind of something like this, but the Astros, in their arrogance, went way, way above anybody else and did what they did, and then apparently they did it during the postseason after being warned as an organization to not do this, and they still did. Does Matt Rule look like he lets the dog (laughs) clean his face after he eats a bowl of ice cream? (laughs) Does Mike McCarthy look like a night shift security guard who falls asleep while the building is being ransacked? (laughs) Does Scott Van Pelt look like your favorite craps dealer in Vegas? (laughs) <laughs> Mike, you're on with Tim Kirkshin. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Tom. Got two questions for you. Just wanted to ask, what are the expectations for the Phillies this year? And also was just wondering if you've had that dream where you're shooting a free throw and it turns into a giant blanket. Has that happened recently? It turns into a coat, doesn't it, your free throw? Yeah, it's a winter coat which, of course, you can't shoot. And sadly, I had it two months ago. I actually keep track of these things now. Two months ago at age 63, I had the winter coat um, dream, yes. And as for the Phillies, um, I think they're much better. I think Joe Girardi is going to make a difference. I think Didi Gregorius at shortstop is going to really settle that defense. I think moving Juan, uh, Gene Segura to second or third is going to make him better. And I think they're going to hit a whole lot more than last year. I think they upgraded their pitching. I don't think they're a playoff team at the moment, but I think they have a chance to be, and they're much better than last year. David, you're on with Tim Kirkshin. Go ahead, David. Hey, Tommy, I was just uh, wondering if you're a cuddler. Do you like to cuddle a lot with your wife, or how does that work? Are you a cuddler? Of course he is. Well, yeah, and yes, I'm, I'm a cuddler. I, I enjoy that. And, by the way, I never heard of the word spooning until about 15 years ago and everyone else on the face of the earth had had heard what the, knew what the word spooning was and i didn't which i acknowledged in a baseball tonight meeting and 20 people in the room laughed at me at the same time i'd never heard that phrase <laughs> i had spooned before but i just didn't know that was the term for it so yes i like I'm, i cuddle and i spoon because i'm old and i'm small Big spoon or little spoon? Well, he's always the little spoon. He's always <laughs> well, the little spoon. I don't know. I'll let him answer. How can he be a big spoon? He's not, he can't be. He's 144 pounds. Little spoon. Uh, <laughs> Kyle, you're on with Tim Kirkshin. Go ahead, Kyle. Hey, Tom. Do you think these current Astro players are going to be held in the same regard as the steroid players? And also, when's the last time you picked up something with your feet? Uh... I have real, I have terrible, well, I have good feet, but I, I, I guess I picked up, uh, I, there was a marble on the floor the other day. I never walk around without my shoes on, ever. My father, God bless him, used to tell me all the time, keep your shoes on at all times unless you're in the bath or in the, uh, or in the shower or in the pool because you're going you're gonna to break a toe on the couch like the thing holding up the couch, and you're going to miss a game tonight, so always keep your shoes on. So it's very rare that I don't have my shoes on at all times. But the other day there was a marble next to me, and I had just gotten out of the shower, and I picked it up with my foot to see if I could do it, and I did. 
Mike, you want to share with the audience what you're whispering uh, to us? I just asked if your brother loves you because I'm watching the sketch live here on ESPN News. Lebo <laughs> is in studio. I feel like he really captured your essence with the eyes, but it is awfully round. And not is, round uh, now. This is an unfinished uh, masterpiece, right? I don't now. think it's going to get thinner, though. <laughs> he made you look like an apple that grew horns. <laughs> I heard you guys say that I look like Benny the Bull as well. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, you do. Uh, Tim, does Jay Cutler look like the guy who has fallen on hard times and is drinking alone on Christmas Christmas Eve at a cheesecake factory? <laughs> does Adam Silver? Look like the BYU student who decided to come back for his final year of eligibility. <laughs> Does Ken Rosenthal look like the over-eager history professor who cannot contain his excitement over today's lesson about the merits of the Gilded Age? <laughs> AJ, you're on with Tim Kirkshen. Go ahead, AJ. Hey, Tom. I was wondering, with Garrett Cole coming from the Astros culture, how will the Yankees uh, handle him in the locker room where they look at him side eye and oh happy day. Uh, I was just at the Yankees the other day and I didn't talk to all the players, but it was obvious they are thrilled to have Garrett Cole on their team. And even though he was on the the Astros, uh, I think they look at him and say, well, he's a pitcher. Maybe he's in a different category, but he's on their team. He struck out a batter in seventy three consecutive innings last year we went back to 1961 the best we could find was 49 consecutive by pedro martinez in 99 2000 so they welcome with open arms anyone that good who strikes out people at that rate and now he's on their team does kyle shanahan look like the manager at a pack sun <laughs> <laughs> or does he look like the fourth member of the beastie boys <laughs> Does Mike Leach look like the jaded cartoon rooster who becomes the unlikely anti-hero of a poultry-themed Disney movie? <laughs> Save that one. one of the dogs playing cards, too, right? Yes, he does. He does look like that. Uh, Timmy, hypothetical here. You know I live in a hypothetical world. Jose Altuve and Correa are available to any team. How many teams sign them? Well, if they're available and the price is right, every team is going to sign those guys. <laughs> I mean, this, I mean, let's be serious about this. I, you know, they, they did a bad thing. They're going to be punished for it. They're being punished for it already. But um, I don't think that you would turn down a chance to get Jose Altuve um, just because he was involved in this. He shouldn't have been involved in this. What he did was wrong. We're still not exactly sure what he did. But I think most teams would say yes. Tim, is that one of the week. dumbest questions you've ever heard? The whole thing is stupid. Well, I'm serious. They're so outraged, but they're not outraged is, enough is, when they is, would sign Jose one, Is that one of the dumbest questions you've ever heard, Tim? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, thank hey, you. Tim, my larger I point just is get this out of here. Is just shut up. Just shut up. Hey, that's dumb. All of it. Okay. That Everyone else is outrage. dumb. Everyone else is dumb. Oh, they're so upset, but you, they sign them on their 15 team. 15 years with the 15 years. Yes, Stugatz. Anyone would sign a talented player who has his freedom. Yes. <laughs> You've been making that point for 15 years. It's uh, useless. It's all dumb. It's all controversy. Advance auto parts. It's here, I'm gonna put it on the poll. What's dumber? The controversy or Stugatz's question? <laughs> Advanced Auto Parts. Are you in need of a new tire pressure gauge or anything where you don't have some expertise about your vehicle? Tell Stugatz. Mike says he's gonna buy this painting. Yeah, we're like, not giving this no, away. No, you're I not it's not for sale. Up. Somebody's <laughs> gonna win it. Somebody's gonna money. win it. Is he making you Darth Maul or an angry bird? <laughs> <laughs> the football season is over. Now your Thursdays, Sundays, and Mondays are dreadfully open until August. Luckily, Advanced Auto Parts has something productive you can do to fill the time, getting your vehicle's battery tested. It's free, and if your battery is low, they'll install your new one for you with purchase. I'm so distracted right now. Mike, you're right. I'm telling you, it's the eyes. They're so <laughs> It's just, it's Dan. It's, it's Dan encapsulated. <laughs> I mean, I got two of them in here. <laughs> he, looks, he looks like a watermelon that's been left out at a picnic too long. Uh, 
Enter the code DAN20 when you buy online to save 20% at Advance Auto Parts. The only shame is how fast you'll get in, out, and back to twiddling your thumbs until football starts up again. Think ahead, think advance. Only at Advance Auto Parts. The best in the business. Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. In Tim Kirchin's voice, some of Pitbull's lyrics so that he could dig deep into his soul. He could feel what it's like to wear incredibly <laughs> tight white pants with a women's uh, batting practice shirt. Oh, my God. Two plus two, I'm going to undress you. Three and three, you're going to undress me. Four and four, we're going to freak some more. Honey got me swishing like a dreadlock. She don't wrestle, but I got her in a headlock. Yabba dabba do, make her bedrock. Yeah! yeah! Esta tan linda, esta tan rica, bien tremendo, culo. Excellent. Nailed it. Was it. No, it was terrible. Oh, no, it. No, it was great. You read great. it like you heard that it was song great. before. It was great. Yes. You, 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 it sounded like you were say? singing it. What did that mean? Uh, Don't worry about uh, it. Uh, just that a little. <laughs> If you missed any of our interviews, check them out on demand in the Dan Levitard podcast brought to you by Eno, the Capital One assistant that catches things that might look wrong with your credit card, sends an alert to your phone, and helps you fix them. Capital One, what's in your wallet? See CapitalOne.com for details. Dan, it's time for Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Chris was bringing the Straight Talk during the break when he was wondering uh, what's uh, your favorite sport to nap to. Uh, oh. Because I I think it are there going to be a lot of nominees other than baseball and golf? I feel like golf is the only answer to this question. It's pretty simple, and I th- thought it's not even worthy of being a topic, but everyone else seems to have other answers. Right. Final round of a non-major on a Sunday afternoon. Has to be a non-major, right? Uh, Nance needs to be doing the play-by-play, and yes, that is the sport. There is no other answer. It is golf, non-major, final round, Sunday afternoon. Dan, I have a confession to make to you. I've been pulling your leg a little with the XFL stuff because I've fallen asleep in a bunch of XFL games so far. <laughs> At Levitard Show on Twitter, put it on the poll. Is golf the best sport to nap to? Mike Ryan, I have lost his attention over the last half hour. He's just staring at what my brother's doing. He wants to buy uh, this painting my brother's doing live in here. You cannot buy it. It can only be one. You have to subscribe. Lebo- well, then I'm going to subscribe to Lebo Art. LeboArt.com is where you go. Excellent timing. I have lost <laughs> uh, his ability to do the show because he is so busy just staring at what my brother is painting. My brother wants some words for this, though. What are some words? That. To- well, I, okay, dark lard, wide. dark I mean, lard. Okay, wide. yes, you guys are very subtle Water with log. fat and wide. <laughs> carbs. Uh, <laughs> carbs, okay, excellent, yeah. um, but not subtle and not funny. Um, but dark lard it's works dark. for me. It's Darth, though. Yeah. Uh, well, no, dark lord, though, right? He's Darth Maul. Yeah. So you gotta be, it's got to be Darth lard. Mm. Fine. $6. Um, I, we haven't decided yet. We will figure out how to do this. Thank you, Stu Gatz, for fat. Thank you. Like, always, always. That wasn't th- me. I said, why? <laughs> okay, fine. Because fat was taken. Horny. Horny's not bad. <laughs> Blart Mall. <laughs> we got to figure out words to put on here. I don't think all of those are going to work, but you could win it at LeboArt.com by subscribing to the newsletter. Danfred. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're missing out on a big opportunity here, man. Stand with Rob Manfred. You and him together. This is it. What am, what, what am yeah, I Yeah, stand with Manfred. What, 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 <laughs> you haven't pronounced his name right. It's hard all. when you say Dan and Manfred all in the same sentence. I mean, it's very but hard. you haven't been. You've been yeah. you've been calling him Manfred <laughs> for about <laughs> six months for some reason. Stanford. Um Stugatz is yelling nonstop during the break about how stupid now the Astros controversy is. Now he wants to pivot to, I'm tired of talking about this, let's just call it stupid. I mean, what's stupid is all the players railing against the Astros. I mean, it seems like every team, as Tim Kircher just pointed out, I mean, they've all attempted to steal signs, right? And so just the fact that this team took it one step further by using cameras and electronics are you kidding? that's what we're outraged about if you could figure it out without the cameras without the electronics it's fine 
But if you dare use a camera or bring electronics into the fold, then we're all going to crush you. And it seems ridiculous, especially when you consider that every team, including the Yankees, Dodgers, all the teams that feel robbed today, they would love to have Springer, Altuve, and all those guys on their team. Episode type one. That that is Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Everything for less, only at Walmart. There is nothing better than the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. All guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. Rob Manfred has apologized for calling the World Series trophy, quote, a piece of metal. No problem, Rob. We stand with you. Stanford. The Clippers are planning to sign Reggie Jackson. Jackson had his contract bought out by the Pistons recently. And finally, a sunburn is the result of your skin cells committing mass suicide to protect you from their damaged DNA, which can cause cancer. What sacrifice. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Giannis Antetokounmpo is out here saying, Stugatz, and I love that as a very young player in the league, he is finding his voice and totally comfortable uh, saying things now publicly with the confidence of a star where he's not afraid to say uh, before the All-Star game, I'm not picking James Harden because he doesn't pass, and he's not afraid to say <laughs> after the All-Star game that they spent uh, all their time in the All-Star game just attacking whoever it is that James Harden was guarding. It's pretty cool to see his confidence grow, like knowing he's got the game to back it up and seeing his confidence grow because he knows eventually he's going to win championships. Well, one of the things that he said, and usually when you have the point differential that the Bucks have, you win the championship because it's been a totally overwhelming team where they're playing him 30 minutes a night and they're just they're just mopping the floor with everybody plus 12.1 usually that wins you the title if if that's where you are I think San Antonio was close to that one year and got bounced in the second round but I think that was the the Shaq Kobe Derek Fisher uh series the next closest this year in the NBA are the Lakers and they are plus 7.4 one of the other things that Antetokounmpo said though was that uh you know he was just asked about playing with his brothers and playing with his brothers uh in L.A. or wherever, and he started talking about how much he would like that and how much his mother would like that. And I just foresee the scenario where Giannis Antetokounmpo does indeed leave Milwaukee, and he leaves Milwaukee because the Knicks have uh, traded for both of his brothers <laughs> and drafted his younger brother, and he leaves for Miami. <laughs> And so the Knicks will have... That's the only place he doesn't want to play with his brothers, <laughs> yeah. right? I got you. <laughs> That's the joke, yes. Um, at... He did send Milwaukee into, like, M Milwaukee fans were a little bit uh, upset by that because they think that Giannis is one of those guys. He will stay there. I'm so good. You come to me. Even if coming to me means coming to Milwaukee. But that little sentence there where, yeah, it'd be fun to play with my brother in L.A., I mean, that threw Bucks fans, Dan. Well, he's not saying flatly, I'm coming back. Like, and, uh, and once you throw in the temptation of, and I, I think the only reason that he leaves there is if he loses this year. If he loses the title and starts to feel the way LeBron did when he was in Cleveland, thinking they're not going to be able to get pieces to Cleveland. Cleveland, you've seen, incidentally. This was, I saw Bomani Jones uh uh, retweeted somebody who made the point, Stugatz, and forgive me for not having that person's name, uh, but made the point that the Cavs now have uh, fired. Uh, they're going on their seventh coach. Is it? Is it their, their? Are they going on their seventh coach or their sixth coach in seven years? And four of the years they made the finals. Eight, if you include LeBron. Four of the years they ended up making the finals, Stugatz. And there's. Do you realize how much this? Dan Gilbert didn't do anything right. 
didn't do it at any time other than spending when LeBron was there, I guess. But before or after, it's the height of mismanagement, Stugatz. You're not going to find any precedent for the for going through that many coaches when you make the finals four of the years? I think Mike Brown is still on the payroll. I do. I think he's still on the payroll. They haven't done anything right. What they did right was lose enough. And listen, they didn't surround LeBron enough with enough the first time he was there. Then they lost enough when LeBron left that they had enough that LeBron was tempted to come back to Cleveland and Kyrie Irving. That's all they've done right is all, lose. All, only, yes, that's right. <laughs> only because they were so incompetent did they have the necessary pieces to lure LeBron back. Uh, and I remind you that that team traded uh, for Luol Dang, thinking it was a final piece away from making the playoffs. <laughs> And what ended up happening after that is they just acquired the pieces needed to lure back LeBron. Uh, Amin El Hassan is in with us. We will get to, uh, he's a big Star Wars fan, and we will get in a moment to what he thinks my brother should put on this painting that he is uh, painting here in the studio. If you want to win the painting, you subscribe to the newsletter at LeboArt.com, and somebody is going to win the painting. If you already did that last week, you're all automatically entered to uh, win this painting. Did we decide whether us signing the painting devalues it or gives it more value to our listeners? Because we didn't sign the last one thinking that we would ruin the value. My brother's paintings go for a lot of money. I know they a do. Lot, the original right. work goes for a lot of money, so we might not want to devalue it by signing it, no matter how much fans of the show want our signatures. Uh, I don't think we should put our signatures on this. And you're right. Your brother's art does go for a lot of money. In fact, I wasted his time. I had him up at my house. He quoted, uh, he gave me a quote, I'm painting something on my wall, and I told him to get the hell out. That's right. <laughs> he just kicked him out. Uh, that's right. Uh, I mean, so what, what are some of the things that you think, if you do not know what we're doing in here, on ESPN News, you can see that I am dressed up as Darth Maul. No one here is paying any attention to the show we're doing today because my brother is in here painting, and they're all just sort of hypnotized and transfixed by what it is that he's putting up here. So, I mean, what, as a Star Wars fan, what do you think, what are some of your nominees for words that my brother should throw up on this painting? So, uh, we started with a lot of kind of Sith names, Darth names, right? Darth not small. You got the Empire Strikes Fat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got Darth Maul Food Court. <laughs> I should be laughing. <laughs> those, are, those are all good. <laughs> then, then we decided to branch out a little bit. So you got Boba Fat, Chulata, <laughs> The Fat to Menace, <laughs> Obi-Wan Cannoli. <laughs> I mean, I can he up. can he put all uh, of them on your head? It's, I mean, I want them all up there. Luke Skyline Chili. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Not lightsaber. <laughs> the Dandelorian. <laughs> Lardo Calrissian. <laughs> And then that's in honor a, that's of, a lot of good choices. In man. honor of the last movie that came out, Star Wars The Rise of Cholesterol. <laughs> Pay that man his money. He's also had fart fart binks. The black dogs. <laughs> Look at how pleased you are with that. <laughs> Whoa! I mean, oh go, go, go sit in the penalty oh, box. Oh, no! You, you were great right until there. <laughs> right, right, right until the end. Job of the fat. Dinner of the month. The Black Tux uh, will have the right suit for your special occasion. It's easy to order, and once you receive your suit, you'll be happy with your decision. Listen to Stugatz, what he tells you. Yep, the Black Tux believes every groom deserves a better experience when it comes to finding formal wear, a suit, or tuxedo for their big day. Did you know the Black Tux was actually started by two guys who had one of the worst tuxedo fittings you could imagine? It turns out they aren't alone in their frustration. Just listen to these one-star reviews from competitor tux shops that shall not be named. Go elsewhere. This place is pretty terrible, unless you're dressing like your grandpa for Halloween. We felt weird buying a suit from somebody so unhappy. We were afraid his bad vibes might follow us to our wedding day, so we left. Whether you are buying your outfit or looking to rent, you won't find a formal wear experience or designs like the ones you'll find at the Black Tux. Everyone on the show has used them. We swear by them. We love them. If you want your wedding to be remembered for the right reasons, Order your suit or tuxedo at theblacktux.com and enjoy 10% off with code DAN. That's theblacktux.com, code DAN, for 10% off your 
purchase, 10% off. Go Dan, the blacktalks.com. Mi familia, Dan and Stu, will be back on ESPN Radio. It's college basketball season, and that means the Wendy's Wooden Watch is on. Go to ESPN.com and search Wooden Watch for the list of Wooden Award late season top 20 nominees to watch as this season rolls on. Keep an eye out on Kansas guard Devin Dotson. The sophomore this season is the Big 12 leader in points per game with 18.4. Second in steals per game with 2.1. The Wooden Watch is brought to you by Wendy's, proud sponsor, of the 2020 John R. Wooden Men's and Women's Player of the Year. So we are going to play in a moment with my brother, the man who has never willingly attended a sporting event. Uh, One last time, uh, we are very grateful that my brother takes some of his valuable time and wastes it with us here. Uh, (laughs) LeboArt.com is where you go if you want to subscribe to the newsletter. But before we get to uh, the man who has never willingly attended a sporting event. Stugatz, uh, you, you make fun of me all the time uh, because every once in a while I become a boxing blowhard, but I'm legitimately excited for a heavyweight fight this weekend, and it's been a good amount of time since I have felt excited for a heavyweight fight. Uh, you, I was surprised to see Deontay Wilder is such a small favorite against Tyson Fury, a betting favorite. Uh, I guess people don't believe uh, that Deontay Wilder has fought enough uh, difficult opponents because he's uh, minus 125 and Tyson Fury is plus 105. And I guess it's based on their last fight together. And Tyson Fury has predicted a second round knockout. Uh, do you have a, does anyone back there have any interest? Because when the heavyweights, when it's the big boys, that is what brings boxing interest. Wait, this is interesting. So this is bringing you to a level of excitement that maybe Tyson and no, Holy... No, 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 no. But there. Deontay Wilder has the punching power that I want to watch. Tyson Fury has the backstory. As That's the highest my interest has ever been because I was just a child right. during the heyday of the heavyweight division with all of those, you know, Foreman and Shavers and Muhammad Ali and everyone else. Absolutely excited for this. This is the biggest heavyweight fight that I can remember in years. Well, biggest since our last fight, which was... No, this one's bigger than, uh, well, than yeah, that Well, yeah, because one. of how it went, uh, especially since, uh, I mean, I mean, Tyson Fury rose from the Well, he the got dead. up. He got up. Nobody gets up when Wilder hits yeah. him. Nobody gets up. Yeah, I'm planning my weekend around it. D-Wage jersey retirement into the big heavyweight fight. I was more excited for Mayweather McGregor. Yes. Really? Yes, that was yeah. A good one. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good fight, Dan. Oh, that one was good. Oh, fight of the decade. I mean, okay. They do another one of those. Time now for the man who has never willingly <laughs> attended a sporting event. Thanks. Good talking to you guys boxing. Thank you. Appreciate it all your help. It is now time to chat with my favorite, more talented son, Libo. Aside from being a world-famous artist, check it out at LiboArt.com. He has also never willingly attended a sporting event. Let's test Libo's sports knowledge. My father has trouble with knowledge there, right? It's uh, a bit nasally. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I, th- I think you forgot an R in Strikes Back. I was, oh, yeah, we'll get that in there. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Empire Strikes Fat. Don't make apologies, Lebo. Been there, Lebo. Empire Strikes Fat. Yeah. Uh, which college basketball powerhouse is coached by Mike Krzyzewski and is nicknamed the Blue Devils? Uh, Penn State. (laughs) It is not Penn State. State. It is not the Penn State Blue Devils. Uh, What does Novak Djokovic do for a living? Hockey goalie. All (laughs) Polish last names. (laughs) I assigned the hockey. (laughs) The Joker. Uh, The Joker. What does uh, Zion Williamson do for a living? (laughs) Zion Williamson. Serbian, I'm sorry. Uh, what is what, Zion? He is a collegiate uh, football coach. <laughs> <laughs> 
boat captain. And that has his own religion. Uh, name any athlete with the first name of Vince. Uh, Vinny Testaverde. Wow! <laughs> Does wow. that count? Is that, that that's I mean, close enough? Yes. I mean, close enough. We yes. have to we yes. have to give that to him, yes. right? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> He's so lucky, a quarterback that played for Miami. I'll was take it. Uh, do you know what MLS stands for? MLS, uh, Major League Soccer. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Two in a row. Do you know what ACC stands for? Uh, ACC, American, Col no, not, I'm already there. No, all, 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 I have no idea what okay. to stand for. Uh, Atlantic Coast Conference. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> That's <been a> long <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who is Matt Ryan? Matt Ryan is a major league baseball pitcher. <laughs> Matty Ice. <laughs> Sounds like one, doesn't it? Uh, what's the name for the University of Michigan's athletic team? Oh. University of Michigan athletic teams? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. All their athletic all their teams. teams. All their, they're they're got, uh, they've got, uh, they are the Michigan blank. Red Devils. <laughs> All right. Uh, Levo is where you end up going if you want to sign up for the newsletter. Big blue, the Red Devils. That painting is the Red Devil. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so we have a we have uh, he got two last time as well, right? So the the last couple of weeks he has uh, he has gotten stuck on two. Uh, so uh, that is a bit of a success, right? We're happy. Uh, we're happy. What about twenty percent rate? That's more than we expected, right? Yes, I mean, Mendoza line. We set the over under at one, so he's exceeding our expectations. Yep. Do any of you guys have any shame whatsoever on how little you helped me with the conversation about heavyweight boxing? I mean, you're no, the boxing really. expert. So you ask us a question, and we just have to have the same answer as yeah. you. No, or? you just have to give me something other you. than. I mean, the, every I time we talk, it. every time we talk boxing, you guys say Mayweather McGregor. I mean, it was a joke, that fight. Whoa. If I had what? money, I'd watch it. How what? about that? Yeah, but, Dan, we grew up Yo. seeing real fights. That's the greatest fight they've ever seen. Unfortunately, it is. I'm with the guys on this one. The highest compliment Roy could give, if I had money, I, <laughs> I would I would watch the fight. These things are expensive, man. I got bills to pay. You know, I got a baby. And, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, go to a bar. No one else is surprised by the fact that the, he's such a small favorite that Deontay Wilder, who hasn't lost a fight and is the heaviest puncher in the history of the sport. Their last fight was a draw. Uh-huh. And, and, yes, you're right. Nobody gets up from those fists. And somehow Tyson Fury, who's crazy, got up. Ah, oh, buddy, this is the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. Nature Valley Sweet and Salty Bars, you'll love the new Sweet and Salty Minis. It's all the indulgent, savory goodness you know, now in a smaller size. And at 100 calories, snacking has never been so sweet. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. The Boca Blue Martini will never be the same. Oh. Uh, misses him so much. Boca Raton misses him so much. I guarantee you he misses the Blue Martini. They don't have those in Oxford. Uh, probably not. 
uh, Billy was stunned by that end finally before we get to Lane Kiffin, just floored by it. Kneecaps just appear? Like, how does that happen? Kneecaps, and kneecaps start showing up between the ages of two and six. Are you surprised oh. by that? Lane, did you know before listening uh, and coming on air here that babies didn't have kneecaps? <laughs> I did not know that. I was actually trying to picture it as because I'm not seeing a TV, so I'm trying to picture whether they do, so I'll go with sounds good. If you say things fast enough and strong enough, everybody believes them. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I've lived my life by that. Lady. That is yeah. recruiting. Yeah. That's what recruiting yeah, is. Yeah, it's soft cartilage. That's why you can't crawl on the ground with them without it hurting. I had a relative say, don't let the facts and details get in the way of a good story once. <laughs> uh, what What have you learned, Lane, uh, along the path that brings you now to the SEC? What's <clears throat> something that you know now that you simply did not know before? I think I'm just like I would hope anybody would in any type of job, you know, 11, 12 years later from last time being a head coach in this conference, you know, you, you got experience and you've been in different places and, um, you know, hopefully don't make some of the same mistakes you made when you were younger. So three years with Coach Saban was extremely valuable and, and you know, taking more of a CEO approach, uh, you know, learning from him as, um, you know, I think he helped at our last spot at FAU and hopefully helps here. How different is Oxford than Boca? <laughs> the water's a little bit different color. <laughs> it's so true. It's a, like a br- is it a br- like, you, like, we're looking at houses. They're like, you got a fish here in the backyard. And we're like, okay. I'm like, yeah, there's some crappie. And I'm like, I'm like, that's the size of the bait fish we use down there. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I I imagine that the real estate is a bit cheaper, right? You can you're you're gonna buy yourself a pal. You've already have you already when you were coming down to FAU, people were talking about. Uh, actually, there was an article written. Somebody was shopping for houses with you. I think. Uh, how has the sh- the house buying experience been there? It is a little bit cheaper, um, you know, but uh, there are some really you know all jokes aside. There's some great areas here and. My brother lived here before when he was assistant coach, so I got to visit him, you know, one summer and see it. And, um, and the people are amazing. You know, it's the SEC and the passion for, for football and for sports is unbelievable. How close were you or what was the closest you were to leaving FAU before this job came along? Um, I don't know. I, I really was – I know every coach says this, but you guys know me. I don't give a coach speak. I was extremely happy there. I loved Boca. Um, you know, love the players, the team, leadership, and um, you know we were doing great things. So I think it's a it's a really easy place to recruit to for obvious reasons. It's Boca and the resort and and uh, the weather. So and a great campus. So I, I was not. Most people at an FBS school are just dying. You know, um, you know to to get back to Power Five and take any job. This was not the case. Um, I was selective in this and wanted to make sure it was a place that could win and had one. You know, this is a place, you know, just coming off four or five years ago, won the Sugar Bowl. How happy are you to actually coach big football players now? Because what was startling watching your FAU football team, and it was a good football team, is that the players are appreciably smaller than the ones in the SEC. I think you always struggle at, at that level in the, in the lines. You know, your your big guys, like you mentioned. You know, you, especially in South Florida, you can find skilled guys all over the place. So we were able to, you know, match up with a lot of, you know, good people with skilled players, but um, the SEC is obviously different. The biggest difference always has been the big players. If you were to give me three reasons that you left for Mississippi, would money be among them, and what are the three reasons? Uh, money would not be. I don't, I mean, again, sounds crazy, but money is very low on my list. I think once, in my opinion, once you get to a point that you can afford to do what you want to do in life, that what's the difference between, you know, making one million or four million you know i know that sounds crazy to a lot of people but and i've been around long enough and i see it all the time in recruiting that you know money money creates a lot of problems it doesn't doesn't solve everything like people think it does so um, i see a lot of happy people without a lot of money and a lot of people with a lot of money not very happy so that that is not up there at all it really was just i think you know the few times a year you know and you know you're watching you know the playoffs and you know you're watching you know Coach Smart, Coach Saban, whoever it is, and, you know, Coach Sweeney, and you're just saying, you know, you, you miss that, you know, you miss that stage of, you know, competing at 
the highest level. So um, I think that that really was the only reason. Um, it was not about money, not about where you live. It was simply about the ability to be at a place that you could compete and you could play against those guys. Did you really just say what is the difference between $4 million and $1 million? Of course it's yeah, $4 I, million, I, I, dollars, Coach. That was $3 million. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you should hit Lane Kiffin with the you don't get the show. Um, is it true? Is it, you don't get the show. Is it true I that? I just always say if you can do what you want to do, if you've made enough money in your life that you can do what you want to do and not crazy and have to you know own private jets and stuff like that, there isn't a whole lot of difference. So make make all this money so you leave it for your kids. Well, most of the time when you leave a lot of money for your kids, those kids are screwed up. So um, be careful what you know what your what your priorities are. Uh, Lane, I'm wondering here because I love the SEC coaches. Like there's some great characters in there. Who is the craziest coach right now in the SEC? Oh, it's not even close. Mike Leach. <laughs> wow, it's not even close. <laughs> I just sat next to him at the league meeting. It was, there's all 14 head coaches and the commissioner in there. Like, right between him and Ogeron, it was like, it was like, I, I should have had to pay money for that seat. <laughs> this guy knows how to ratchet up the egg bowl. Where, man. where do mean... you where do you rank uh, in terms of crazy in the conference among the coaches? Because you got to finish behind Ogeron too, right? I don't know. It, it was a great seat. Ogeron to my left was just saying, you know, as they were talking about his stuff, and he's just saying, let's go hit somebody, just win, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what? He just next to me, and he's like, he goes, "Hey, are you going south? Or are you going back to Mississippi? I need a ride to Key West." <laughs> <laughs> what What percentage of Ed Orgeron's words does Lane Kiffin understand? One hundred. But you got to remember, that's a lot of years. That's, I think, four years as assistant coach with him at USC. Then, then um, I was his head coach at Tennessee, and then I was head coach at USC. So that's a lot of years. Uh, to figure out that um, that Cajunese. You told LSU when you were in Alabama. Is it true that you told LSU to hire him? I did. I thought that it would. You know, I talked to the AD and thought that he'd do a great job. Things are about fit. I mean, what an amazing fit. I mean, look what happened. They won a national championship. But I mean, what a perfect fit for LSU to recruit to the state of Louisiana, and, and he's a great coach and, and great leader. So um, yeah, I told him that. I thought. <clears throat> be a no-brainer to definitely keep him he'd been the interim at the time how much time are you spending dreaming of beating nick saban who told you not to wear a hat to meetings <laughs> i didn't even know you how do you i didn't even know that story was out there about the hat <laughs> you told it to us you're the reason it's out you're, there the only reason is you're the source on that story <laughs> memory by you guys <laughs> um, but you've got to be thinking about that, right? Like, because he, he um, and I know you're hugely appreciative of all things Nick Saban. I know that, that you, you have a great deal of admiration for him, but there were also a bunch of things around him that felt kind of silly that aren't how Lane Kiffin runs his, his show. I just came in, I'm, you know, I kind of say as assistant coach, it's almost like you go from, you know, a parent to like a step-parent. You know, and so Pete Carroll I was with for six years, kind of raised by him in the profession, and it's an assistant coach. The next time I'm an assistant coach is I'm working for Nick Saban. So, I mean, I've said before, two of the best coaches to ever coach, um, Hall of Fame coaches, but do every not just one thing different. They do every single thing different, you know. I mean, nothing close to, to each other. So that was more of an adjustment period, you know, for me, you know, just from what I was used to going to, like I said, like someone going to a step-parent. Can you tell us the best story that you have about how vehemently you oppose the idea of Jamarcus Russell being Oakland's quarterback? This is nothing against Jamarcus, and I've said it before. It was, you know, it was midnight the night before the draft. I just said simply, hey, you know, we're going to pay this guy, you know, upwards of sixty, ended up being sixty-three million dollars. All right, and he's not ready for it. I said I wouldn't have been ready for it at twenty-one, so he's not ready to handle that, and you know. And hasn't played very much, you know. And Mr. Davis was obsessed with the Sugar Bowl game where he beat Notre Dame. And that's, you know, he watched the game on TV, so he was just obsessed with that. And I'd step, you know, Jeff Garcia was coming in free agency, and and Calvin Johnson was there, and said Calvin Johnson's the best receiver I've ever seen ever work out in my life, you know. And this guy's gonna be one of the best ever. So, but he was just just set in his mind. Obviously, it was his franchise. So. 
direction we went. When you think about discomfort that you've endured arriving now back in the SEC and back in a place of that feels like big football, uh, the exit in Oakland where Al Davis calls you a flat-out liar and says that you're bringing disgrace to the organization, is that the top of the list for you on discomfort, or do you have something else that's happened where you were like, man, that was a really unpleasant thing to go through? Being fired at the airport at 3 a.m., fifth game of the year at three and two on probation down 30 scholarships wasn't really fun <laughs> especially when it was not expected and you're just flying back getting ready to go to the office you know sleep in the office to work the next day that was that was kind of uncomfortable i guess as you ask we're uh, we're happy to be able to have you back in the uh, sec we're happy to be able to talk to you again lane lane i don't want to raise expectations but i have you five and oh after five weeks you play baylor auburn lsu and alabama yeah, they didn't tell me the schedule before I did the job. <laughs> Lane, thank you for being on with us. We appreciate talking to you. All right, they did just turn the TV on. What are you guys doing, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> like, trying to figure out like, how... <laughs> it's such a good question. Like, hey, we got this boring guy on the interview. Nobody's going to pay attention, so let's just start painting stuff. Or wear weird stuff. That is such a good question. I don't know if you're a Star Wars fan, but I am Darth Maul. I lost. Uh, it's a complicated story, but I lost. Uh, and Just now I, up, I'm. Do you know anything about Star Wars? I don't. Seems huh? like seems like you guys started an early happy hour there. With there the you go. The, the, the blue martini misses you. Uh, we miss you, Lane. Thank you for coming on. All right, guys. Have a good week. See you later. Look, I don't dance now. I make money moves. We reached out to Coach Leach so he could defend himself against these accusations of Lane Kiffin that he's the craziest head coach in the SEC, but AWOL. Well, keep trying him because I miss talking to him every he day. He misses talking to us. I've heard him say this on, like, uh, affiliates of ours. Like, I miss talking to those guys. All right, well, let's do it. Let's get him back on every day. Advanced Auto Parts, again, LeboArt.com is where you need to go if you want to win this. People are going to want to win this. Great. This is really exceptional. And LeboArt.com is where you go if you subscribe to the newsletter. Somebody will win this. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate you wasting your time with us. Advance Auto Parts, to tell the people why uh, we value Advance Auto Parts. Yep, the football season is over. Now your Thursdays, Sundays, and Mondays are dreadfully open until August. Luckily, Advance Auto Parts has something productive you can do to fill the time, getting your vehicle's battery tested. It's free, and if your battery is low, they'll install your new one for you with purchase. Plus, Enter the code DAN20 when you buy online to save 20%. The only shame is how fast you'll get in, out, and back to twiddling your thumbs until football starts up again. Think ahead. Think advance. Only at Advance. Total Park. Keep it on the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. Well, well, on the prowl tonight. Hey, little lark, get out of the dark. Foul. If you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Levitard Show, plus our Miami-only hour and our Best of Podcast on demand in the ESPN app. And subscribe to the Levitard and Friends Podcast Network featuring South Beat Sessions, Supodity, and Mystery Crepe. Please rate and subscribe. New episodes are posted every week wherever you get your podcasts. Amin El Hassan has just emerged from his slumbering place underneath the desk of Billy Gill. <laughs> he is always there, uh, and the Cavs have gotten rid of another coach. And can it be said, Amin, given, and I think it might be a stretch, but it might not, given that since 2010, They've gone through Mike Brown, Byron Scott, Mike Brown again, David Blatt, uh, Larry Drew, uh, Beeline. Now they're on Bickerstaff, Ty, uh, Ty Lue. Um, is that the worst-run franchise in the sport, even understanding that the Knicks are pretty poorly run too? Oh, man, they got stiff competition, man. The Knicks, the Suns, the Kings, the Timberwolves. You know, <laughs> people, we were talking about this uh, during the whole Carl Anthony Towns not getting enough respect despite not winning a game since Thanksgiving. Um, the Timberwolves, if it weren't for the Knicks, we'd talk about them as the worst team in sports. They've made the playoffs one time since 2004 when they got knocked out in five games rather unceremoniously. But even if you look at their pre-2004 history, uh, that was the only year they made out the first round of the playoffs. And everything they had in their, in their existence, they owed to Kevin Garnett. 
without Kevin Garnett, this is by far the worst team in sports. So Cleveland's bad. It's up there, but they've got some competition. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, uh, is everyone wrong about him? Like, I, I really thought he was going to be a special player who could carry a team. The, the talent is there, but he's got to accept certain things about himself. So I'll give you a great example. The top two lineups in the Timberwolves this year in terms of minutes played, if you take the same four players and put Gorgie Jeng as the center, as the fifth guy, they have a decent top 10 defensive rating. You take Gorgie Jeng out, and the only thing you change is you make Carl Anthony Towns the player with the rest of those four guys, not just the worst defensive rating in the league, but quite possibly the worst defensive rating in NBA history. Oh, whoa, whoa, wow. Whoa. He's horrible. and <laughs> He's horrible defensively, and, <laughs> and it's not something that's recent or just this year. He's been that way the whole time, and it's not just a numbers thing. If you pull up the film and you watch the clips, he's just doing whatever he wants out there. And – that's been the knock on him. He's got a uh, very low buy-in to what things are going on. It's the reason why Jimmy Butler and, and Tibbs got run out of town is because the guy wouldn't buy in. They would try to introduce things, and he would say, well, at Kentucky, we did it this way. Kid, everyone's got a scrapbook. Uh, no one cares about what you did in college. Can the Knicks get him? Towns? Yes. I mean, I think Minnesota's still bought in on how great he is for them, and they just got D'Angelo Russell but, yes, at some point, I imagine the Knicks would be in, involved in that. <laughs> Did you say they had the worst defensive rating of all time with Carl Anthony Towns? That lineup with Towns in there would be one of the worst defensive ratings of all time. <laughs> What's happening there, though? I mean, is he bad at defense? Is he not trying on defense? Like, what? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a combination of everything. The radio audience, by the way, is really tickled. Pink Keep biology. it moving. Uh, no, it's 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 a combination of things. One, he doesn't do the right things. He doesn't he doesn't uh, execute. And the other part of it is, if you do that consistently every year, at some point, you just aren't a good defensive player. That's just a fact. He's not a good defensive player. Would you argue he's the worst defensive player of all time? And don't make Billy do that again. <laughs> Billy, is I wish I was a baby right now. My kneecap is. He's, He's he's up there. Did you actually hurt yourself with the mind blown? I think it's one of your best ever. Nice socks. Um, I think came out of nowhere. If, <laughs> yes, if you guys were not watching on ESPN Ooze, I'm uh, I'm hoping that even if you were, you missed it. No, the can't. They didn't miss it. The first time. That's why. Yeah, the no. first time. Yeah. Oh man. No, but don't worry. They got no. it the second time. Oh, the they missed the mind blown. Well, if for those that missed it, what was the stat? No, don't do that again to Billy. <laughs> Billy injured himself flying out of the screen with a mind blown situation. When you look at the top two lineups yeah. the Timberwolves played this year, uh -huh. and the only player you separate uh, is the center position, Gorgie Jeng versus Carl yeah. Anthony Towns. Yeah. With Gorgie Jeng, it's about a top 10 defense. Uh -huh. With Carl Anthony Towns, it's not only the worst defense in the league, but might be one of the worst of all time. <laughs> they, the TV blew it. They blew it on television. Keep it locked to the Dan Lebatar Show on ESPN Radio.
I don't know. I mean, I guess based on the story I just read, you would guess. But when were they ever thriving, yeah, the libraries? Never, I mean, it, libraries, well, back when you couldn't find things on the Internet, you had to go search for them. Yeah, yeah but libraries weren't capitalistic ventures. Right, They're but, publicly funded, and the only way they get money is if you have like a late book. I'm not talking about it as a business. I'm talking about uh, the idea that uh, all over America, libraries have to be cavernously empty. Uh, probably, but is that a bad thing? I mean, there's nothing like a good stroll to a public library uh, the old That's card catalog right. i mean all of it I mean, it's great microfiche i mean yeah is he wrong you want an empty library dan and i'll tell you why right now thanks for asking this is why you want an empty library what's the number one rule of a library shh yep that's the number one rule too many people less shh yep. less people more shh Good point. so that's what you want at the library mm -hmm. <laughs> yep uh, Mike, can we finally get to uh, finally get to the Miles Garrett Mason Rudolph take that no one has heard? Uh, oh, yeah. ESPN tried to prop up that story that was dead for several days. Mike Tomlin came on first take. We we milked more. The story was dead. It was dead, and then we milked some more out of it. Uh, <laughs> we just it was done, and then we could show the video again and again and again. Of um, any more milk in there? No. I, I mean, is there any more milk in there? I mean, milk. I mean, fan allegations were made. People responded. This is how this works. I know, but, uh, you know, Mike Tomlin, uh, several days after the fact, appeared on first take. Because that was Mike we Tomlin's were, doing. We were milking it. Did we you just know, provide the platform. Did you know he only blinked twice during that entire interview? Mm -hmm. mm. Higher than normal. I made that up. But I, I had the under. Right. Yeah. Here, here's the take that you're not really hearing anybody admit. I want all this to go away. This is what they're saying behind closed doors at the NFL and Dada Group, too. There is no good result here. None of it. There isn't. If this thing goes a distance, if there is legal, if there is a, a suing of Miles Garrett. Well, now Tomlin is saying that he would consider legal action, and Mason Rudolph is saying, or makes and Rudolph's people are saying they keep that, floating it out there that he is considering legal action. We said that Mason Rudolph looks like somebody who would tell you that his daddy's going to sue you. But Tomlin also said he would want the story to go away and then said he would pursue aggressive legal action. Yeah, Michael McCann actually <laughs> wrote an interesting article as to why Mason Rudolph would probably not actually pursue a legal option because if he's the one doing the suing, then the burden of proof is on him. He actually has to prove that Miles Garrett didn't hear this, which is a lot more difficult, whereas essentially a tie is a loss for Mason Rudolph at that point. And all of us, nobody really knows what happened. But let's follow this to the end of where it is. And there's a, a big lawsuit, and we find out maybe something was said or wasn't said. Societally, I'm not going to like any of these results. E each side is going to be propped up in an election year to m mean something socially that it's an ugly situation. There is no good ending here. Miles Garrett lied, or the, I guess the best ending is Miles Garrett thought he heard something that was just a misunderstanding. Maybe he heard something like that, but wasn't exactly that. But what 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 are we rooting? People are rooting for things here. You want to root for Mason Rudolph, a, a white quarterback in the NFL, to actually say that word, or do you want to root? For Miles Garrett, a black player, a former number one overall pick, lying about this. I can't tell which is worse. This is all awful. I want it to go away. I just hope it's buried. Well, if Mason said it, that's that's worse. Okay? Do we all agree on that? I mean, they're both pretty bad, though. In, in these particular times, both of them are bad. But when Mike says there is no good that comes from it, I would say ratings. Ratings is a good that comes from it, and it's why some of that milk, some of that gets milked. Like, obviously, it's all ugly, and obviously, none of it. This is what I've told you before, whether we're talking about Hulk Hogan shouting the word. The ways that we discuss racism in these venues is spectacularly dumb. We just go to the easiest, most obvious place of did he call me that name or did he not call me that name? Should he be using that word or not using that word? Does it end with an A or an R? We go to the dumbest places possible in discussing this stuff as opposed to talking about the stuff that is meaningful racism that means something, not something shouted possibly by a quarterback in a rage of frustration or not, you know Justin what is that Smollett is that it? he's now Smollett, he's being Jesse, he's being Jesse indicted Smollett. now in in Chicago um like 
all of this stuff is it's just empty headed nonsense where people can discuss race comfortably when it's this when it's this stupid. Yeah, it's a, even racists can get behind the fact that saying the N word that's sort of cut and dry. That's the tipping point on what we can all. But th- no, get but that but that's a place though. You racist. will find when something like that happened, you will find instantaneously for as much complaining as we've gotten over the years here because I talk race too much instantaneously everyone's in on the dumb conversation like it the what when it arrives and it's got a video immediately people are like no it's okay to talk race there and it's the dumbest possible way to do yes, it yes but i don't know how to have this conversation i can tell you i don't want to have this conversation because there is nothing good here to discuss it's all ugly both outcomes, either outcome is ugly. You either have a guy lying about, talk about this story, right, or misheard you, or lying about what he heard, or you have a quarterback who actually said that to a black. There's no audio. Man. Right. Curious, curious. Yeah, I I don't get how to discuss this. I just want like the Astros. I want to talk about the Astros. That's how I want to discuss this story. I don't want to ask any of the questions associated with this story. It's horrible. Look. I don't dance now. I make money moves. Was the take worth the wait? or I, mean, I just don't think we're going to go viral. I was thinking the opposite. When you were going in here, I was like, guys, this might be it. I think we got it here. I, I need to go viral dressed as Darth Maul. And, um, I mean, you had the chance. I'm telling you, stand with Rob Manfred, man. <laughs> Danford. Ag Stanford. Yeah. You also can't have a topic go away if you bring it up on the show. That's right. So you kind of. <laughs> That's right, and and, and tease it for two days, yeah. <laughs> which is my fault, not not Mike's. But Mike did say, "I've got to take no one's guy." Have you heard that though? <laughs> can I invite I, publicly? I don't want to talk about this. Can I invite Rob on the show? Can I invite Rob on the show, the commissioner? Can I invite him to a safe haven, to a safe place? Can I do that? Would yeah, you mind if I do that? Fine, that Dan is in your corner. <laughs> I'm, am I in his corner? I think that's overstated. What do you mean Dan is in his corner? I think it's a no-win position. It's the best I can say for it. Right. That's it. Well, that's Is that in his corner? Don't, in, don't invite him. Well, forget, forget it. it. I'm not going to see where this is going. I've got to uh, get out of here to get the makeup off. It takes 25 minutes so that I could get rid of uh, all of the makeup to do highly questionable. So Stugatz will send you soaring into the sky to punctuate the show today. Raycon has the most affordable wireless earbuds on the market. Tell them, Stugat. Yep, you already know. Raycon earbuds started about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and they sound just as amazing. How do I know? They sent me a pair. Their latest model, the E25s, their best ones yet. I absolutely love them. E25s offer you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design. For a comfortable noise isolating fit, Raycon earbuds are stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems. Raycons, they were co founded by Ray J, and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and J.R. Smith are obsessed with Raycons. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash Dan. That's buyraycon.com slash Dan. You're experiencing the Dan Levatar show on ESPN Radio. Today on ESPN Daily, Triple Double Machine, Sabrina Lonescu. Hope I said that right. Could have left Oregon for the WNBA. Instead, she returned with one goal, a national championship. Hear the backstory of college basketball's biggest star. That's on ESPN Daily with Mina Kimes, presented by ADT. Download, subscribe, and review ESPN Daily, available wherever you enjoy your podcast. Dan is uh, getting the makeup taking all, uh, taken off his face for highly questionable. I will get to the polls in a second. Uh, Chris, who was out yesterday, did have a chance to really comment on the Astro scandal, but I did have a private conversation with him where he would like uh, someone to top Nick Markakis. Yeah, Nick Markakis. <laughs> 
Markakis is getting praised today. It's for, a tough name. Yes, for saying that the Astros players should get beat up, I believe is what he said was his exact quote. Yes, beat and up. I, and he got praised for it. People were celebrating. You know, Nick Markakis not a guy that says a lot. He came out, says they should get beat up. And I'm thinking other guys around the league are probably looking at this saying, all right, I see here what his lane is. Let me see how I can one-up him here. And I'm picturing like a Daniel Murphy with the Rockies. He's like, you know what, today? I pledge to burn down the house of every single Astros player. <laughs> you know, like, what's the next step here? Obviously, we don't want to physically well, harm them. I, I think you took, like, five too many steps there from beating up to burning down someone's I'm house. I'm just saying, if you want to make news. What's the next news? step after beating up is what you're looking right. for. What is the next step after beating someone up? Hmm. It's not. It's certainly not burning down their house. No. Maybe just, you know, stealing something from them, possibly. Right, right. I feel like beating someone up is a bit too excessive to be maybe quite a hostage with this. situation. Right. Maybe kidnap somebody. Kidnapping. I'm not saying anyone right. should do right. this. Right. No one gets right. Nobody right. gets hurt. Right. Nobody's injured. I'm just saying in terms of threatening them, because you know yeah. he threatened to beat him up. That's physical. So right. like, yeah. well, Marquez isn't beating anyone up. No, so, the I mean, end is like a Charlie no, no, Sheen no, no, comedy no, no, no. where it was like a Twix bar the entire time. He right. didn't <laughs> say that he was going to beat them up. He said that they deserve beating. Oh, right. so we just say it that way. Okay, they deserve to have their houses burned down. If someone says that today. No, no. I'm just saying to get celebrated. You're not actually going to go and burn down their house, but if Daniel Murphy wants to get a few pats on the back, he says, you know what? They deserve to have their houses burned down. How about this? They deserve to have their cars towed. Right. Cars towed. In a real inconven- at a real inconvenient time. Well, hold on. Uh, would you rather get beaten up or have your car towed? Beat up. I think I'd rather get beat up. Uh, getting your car towed is a hassle, Mike. Would you rather get beat up or have your car towed? Put on the pole at Levitar. Car towed. I would much rather have uh, my it's car. A pain. No, it's but a you pain, can get beat though. up for free. Now, what if Nick Markakis was actually doing the beating, Mike? Games. What I mean, if really Nick Markakis was beating you up? Yeah. So yeah. now you have a scenario where Nick Markakis is beating wait, you how up. Tall, how tall is Nick Markakis? That's what? a good question. Give me his measure. I once, I once saw him at a mall. <laughs> not very, not very <laughs> threatening. No, he's not very threatening looking. I saw him at a mall, and I'm like, who is this guy? I know this guy. And then, like, two weeks later, it hit me. I'm like, that was Nick Markakis. you don't want him. Rest assured, Nick Markakis said, if I saw you in a mall, you can mind your business. I would have known. No, you don't want him. What are the measurables on Nick Markakis? Nick Markakis without the beard. Without the beard. Without it. Not scary. Really? Without the beard, not scary. He looks like Jim Cantori without the beard, and Jim Cantori is not No one's got a measurable. But Mike needs the measurables. It's a good question by Mike. I know Sugats has tried to Google it, but he can't. We can all agree. I cannot. <laughs> we can all agree he has a great chin, right? I'm looking at pictures here. He has a I, great chin. It's I two C's, you, right, Mike? I have no idea no what C's. Nick Markakis looks he like. He could walk in here right now? And he's been in the prison. I have him, Mike. <laughs> I have the measurables. 6'1", 210. 6'1", 210. Oh, he's 36 like years oh. old. Mike, I feel like you no, would take Markakis to the woodshed. No, 6'1", I mean, 210? You don't believe no, that. No, no. no Mike, Mike would. Mike would. You don't believe that. Nick would. That would be good for you. Would Tony take Markakis to the woodshed? No one here would. No one would take Nick Markakis to the woodshed. Tony Mike. Yeah, Tony Mike. Nick Markakis seems tough as nails. All right, well, well, answer the question, though. So you would rather have <laughs> you would rather have uh, Markakis beat you up than your car towed? No, I'd rather get my car towed than get beat up. Not me. I don't know. I well, think I'd I've rather. I've had my car towed How before. Long? It's a pain. How long is the fight? A uh, five-minute fight. How much damage is being Markakis five gets to pummel you for five time. minutes. No, it's man. Listen, pummeling. get your car. Round. <laughs> Uh, round of MMA. Beat you up. Um, wait, wait. But, but get your car towed is like a 48-hour event. It is. It's the whole ordeal. Yeah, but yeah. you're saying beat me up flatly. Now, the question, would I rather fight Nick Markakis or get my wow. car towed? Then it is literally in my own hands. I mean, you can obviously fight back. If you're fighting back. Nick Markakis, he's beating you up. Right. <laughs> I don't, I'm not so sure. Oh That's what I just said. For I said I feel like Mike oh might God. be able to well, take Markakis to the woodshed. No, I'm not woodshed. I think it'd be a good fight. No chance. Yeah, and and it's a five minute time limit, right? Yeah, That's five minutes. Saying? Five minutes. You yeah. have to you have to dance if, around if, with Markakis for five if, minutes. If I realize like, oh man, I I underestimated Nick Markakis, then I got five minutes, you know, just to sort of kill time, get him in like a tie up. Right. No. You, no. Is this an honorable fight or no rules? You know, right, so Billy, let's you know I'm bigger than Nick Markakis. I know he's Nick Markakis, yeah, right? But, so, but you like, don't show like he's a good fighter. And you're younger, Billy. I am a great fighter. Wow. I was a black belt in Kempo Karate. Wow. Yes. Now, granted, that? I was nine years old when I got this right. Uh, right. black belt, but I know how to fight. Right. Mm-hmm. Mark Hakus would kill you. Does that stay with you for life, that black belt? Do you have to renew it? Like, so I, think has, has you should. I really <laughs> think you should. You really should. Upgrade. You really should. You really should. <laughs> because I don't remember any of this. Black uh, belt expired there. But, <laughs> right, right. but I've Maintenance. been in a fight in like the last <laughs> five years. Right. I won it. Okay, I get so. two. 
I don't want to reveal all the details. <laughs> but someone bigger than Nick Markakis? Yeah. Older than Nick Markakis? No. Professional athlete. I don't know. Dude was rolling. <laughs> I mean, I beat up. <laughs> I, listen, I beat up Masvidal. I so I mean, there's that, you know. So, Billy, because the car towed could be like a 48-hour deal. Yeah, it's a whole ordeal. I'm telling you. And at 48 hours, you're lucky if you get your car back after it's towed. Plus, you have to pay. Plus, there are fines. I mean, you got to go down to the garage. It's uh, It could be a week. So, will anyone one-up Nick Markakis is the question. You deserve to have your house burned down. Let's hear it from somebody. It's not. It's too it's far. It's what they deserve. It's not what they're going to do. There's it's just gotta what be they a, deserve. There's got to be a step be, between getting beaten up and... You know, house being burned down. There has to be. I'm so I'm looking at a picture of Nick Markakis right Mike. now. You're taking me? I'm taking Mike. I take my chances over getting my car towed. And that's just because I hate getting my car towed. He's got quite the Adam's apple. He does. Markakis. But it's a target for Marcus, me. Uh, we didn't get to the pulse. But this was a much more delightful conversation. What took us so long to get to it? Oh, it was Levitar. This was the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. We live in a racist country. 